Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-37. Our last episode found a cordial King Pellet greeting the party members with an unusual amount of happiness. While all things seem to be good in the Denali land, our group senses unusual motives. Grish had received a notice for a meeting with a sage. We pick up now as he reaches an old tower in the northern section of town. A voice behind the door responds to Grisha's knocking with the reply of, I'm coming, I'm coming. Creaking open, Grish sees the previous night's messenger peeking out. I have come to see your master as requested, Padden. Open the door and allow me access, boomed out the large cleric. The meek man nodded and opened the door, showing the cleric into a dimly lit tower. Once his eyes grew accustomed to the lighting, Grish observed stacks and stacks of books in nearly every spot on the floor. He awaits you in his study, my lord. Shall I show you the way? said Patton. The Zenobian shook his head and carefully moved through the dusty tomes until he reached the stairs on the far wall. Grish took a deep breath, trying to get the molding paper smell out of his nose before the ascent. As he reached the top, he found Simon's main study. The access point creaked under his large weight until he finally arrived on the second floor of the tower. Behind a large table was a spindly man with a large crystal eyepiece and his nose buried in a book entitled The Morian Curse by Mika's Tumo. The cleric started to speak but was cut short with a raised hand from the sage. A grunt of displeasure followed as the man took in the strange items contained within the study. After several minutes, the sage closed the book and addressed the cleric. Grish, do you know what I like about this book? He said as he waved the tome about. Grish nodded negatively and Simon continued. The Morian curse is a story about things not always seeming to be what they are. In that historical document, the clerics were all were-rats inflicted with lycanthropy. Brows furrowed as the cleric did not like the comparison. Do you honestly think I've been afflicted with that disease, old man? Simon chuckled. No, of course not. He sat silently for a few moments then spoke again. We have had our differences, you and I, but I think it may be time to put those aside for the greater good. I would like to share some information with you that you may find interesting. Grish responded. There were no differences. After the last king died and King Pellet took the throne, he no longer required your guidance. You were removed from the palace to live out the rest of your days, providing information to people who cannot find answers themselves. I do not dislike you. I do not like you. What possible information could you have for me that I would not already know? A thin smile stretched over the old sage's lips and he moved to a bookcase. Leaning down over towards the floor, his bones creaked as he recovered a book from the bottom shelf. He carried over the damaged book and plopped it down on the table in front of Grish. I have marked the page you will find interesting. An exasperated Grish picked up the old tome and moved over one of the candles so that he could read the handwritten text. Straining against the dim light, his eyes widened as he filtered through the manuscript. As puzzlement flushed over his face, he looked up at Simon, then back to the text. Rereading the words, he shook his head in disbelief and began to murmur to himself, No, this cannot be. The feeble sage got up and poured a drink of dark tea into two glasses. But it is true. You recognize the seal on the cover. There is no question about it. Grish gulped at the beverage and continued to read the passage and shake his head. 
After several takes, he stood up and slammed the book down on the table, spilling his beverage. This is some sort of trick, Sage, he exclaimed. Calmly blowing over his hot tea, Simon took a sip and shook his head. I wish that it were a trick, but it is not. I knew when you threw me out of the palace, but I had no proof. I have searched multiple locations trying to find this document. For some reason, it was hidden in the stacks at the library in Tigo's Vale. I just got back right before you and your associates littered the bay with our ships. I don't believe you, shouted the cleric. This is a ruse. Pellet is the rightful king. There is no question. Simon shook his head. King Bador the Wise not only had no family, but he had no distant relatives either. King Pellet holds no dominion over the throne or the people. This book should have been in the Saydown Library, not hidden in the stacks to the east. This documents the entire lineage of the Denali people and is not subject to speculation. I do not mean to upset you, large one. I mean to enlighten you. If you doubt me, feel free to go to Tigo's Valley and speak with the librarian there. She will confirm the account I just gave you. Pellet said he was from the east. Go see for yourself. I am telling you that your liege is a fraud. Snap me in two if you'd like. It will not change the truth. Grish stomped around with his muscles flexing while the sage sat quietly sipping on his tea. Why? Why would you tell me this, sage? Tell me why I shouldn't throw you into the dungeon for your heresy. Simon sat silently for a moment and then spoke. Because you know it is true. Deep inside of your chest, Grish, you know Pellet is a fraud. Back in the throne room, King Pellet yelled out, Lieutenant Santos, get in here. A man entered the throne room, dressed in the shiny green armor of the king's personal guard. Santos, where is Grish? The guard replied that he did not know, and the monarch thought for a moment before issuing an order. Take a platoon of men and find my captain. He is to report here immediately, and without his new friends. Should he falter or delay, you are to bring him to me without his consent. Do you understand? The silent man smashed his fist against his armor and gave a salute to the king. Exiting, Pellet heard through the door Lieutenant Santos picking his men. Maybe time to get a new captain of the guard, muttered Pellet as he looked over the harbor from his window. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.